see already in market we have different disciplines about analytics and uh, business intelligence and for making the business decisions and any organization related decisions we have different disciplines like uh, business intelligence and even one more designation you will see about the people like data analyst and if you talk about data engineering that is completely the technical roles like big data, NoSQL, streaming technologies such kind of things okay and recently the buzzing word is a data scientist see even though business intelligence people are existed, data analyst people are existed, what is the need of a data scientist and what he will do additionally when compared with intelligence team and analyst team. So this clarity first we will take today. So let's talk about a business intelligence team. Already you know about data warehousing. Within this data warehousing different people will be involving like ETL people, visualization people warehouse management people so all these people integration is simply so all these three types of three varieties of people will come under business intelligence team see if you talk about this business intelligence the basic uh, or the flow is like this one typical organization will be using multiple OLTP servers you know OLTP online transaction processing where our end user transactions will be recorded into these OLTP systems. See, one typical organization will be maintaining different different OLTP systems. But each system can be into different operating system that may use different database. So why, so organizations are going for multiple OLTP, OLTP systems, why not a single system here? See, if, you, if your organization is having some 100 applications, if all the 100 applications are running under one server means the application server's performance might be down. That's why they will be using different OLTP systems, OLTP servers. So these servers based on the application or based on the region, they can go for multiple things. So think that you have server, server 1, like OLTP server 1 and server 2, server 3, like this. So first server might be a Windows operating system and it might be using some Oracle database. Second thing might be, this is for other different application, it might be using Linux. And here the database can be like a DB2 or any other thing. In this way, for different applications or different regions, different OLTP systems we will be having. But the problem with these OLTP systems is they cannot maintain entire operating data. So maybe maintain number and data. So like uh, generally organizations will maintain one year data or two years data into this one. But uh, where this entire history will be available? The entire history will be available into warehouse systems. You can say simply as a data warehouse. Of course, for the OLTP systems, that popular database is used is uh, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, even MySQL, such kind of databases will be useful for the OLTP systems. But if you talk about this data warehousing, there are exclusive databases we need more capacity when compared with OLTP systems. If your organization is having like uh, suppose a 10 to 15 years of history for each year it is getting some uh, approximately one terabyte of data means if you keep this entire 15 terabyte of data into world tp systems and if you run the if you, if you keep it to normal databases like oracle db2 if you run some analytic processes or batch processes it may take like even for some processes it may take even days of time that's why we need more storage capacity and we need more processing speed that's why for the warehousing purpose, the industry will be using specialized databases called Teradata, even Netizia, Vertica. So here Netizia is IBM product, Teradata is by Teradata Corporation itself, and Vertica, there is some other database like this. Even volume still more bigger, like a 200 terabyte, 300 terabyte are mostly near to close to 
petabytes or more than petabytes, even such kind of databases will also not fit. At the time, they might be using Hadoop kind of big data systems like this. So on such way, OLTP systems are separate, these warehouse systems are separate. Complete analytics processes will be running under these warehouse systems. Entire historical data will be maintained in warehouse systems. And batch process and analytic process will be running by these databases. But it's all the things for the end client, that means for the final top level management, they need these kind of business related reports in visualized formats. For that we have different visualization tools in the market. Okay. So these visualization tools like uh, nowadays the popular one table a user. So such kind of reporting systems will be so click view tab those are not that much popular. In case of a world we supporting this one. And Cognos nowadays Cognos PM is there. Even SAP has SAP Bevo such kind of tools. So any question please uh, type into the chat box sir. later I will go through the chat. So these things. In this way like we have separate three separate departments here. So OLDP systems, warehouse systems and visualization systems. Then where this BA will BA people will come into these three things here. See there should be some technical team which can extract data from OLTP systems and perform by performing some transformations and then they need to dump into warehouse warehousing databases. So these people are simply called as ETL people. So already we have different ETL tools in the market like Informatica. Even latest things like a Pentaho, even Talent, such kind of, of course I have an issue. So still other tools are there, even data stage also comes under this ETL only. We have many so many number of ETL tools. Even cloud computing, if you talk about cloud cloud computing, AWS kind of systems are offering AWS Glue, GLUT. So such things are comes under ETL part. What this ETL team will be doing is, they will be extracting, they will be connecting with the different sources of databases and they will be performing some transformations and finally loading into the target warehouse systems. So here what is the need of a transformation, extract a transformation. So what is the need of transformation is, here in OLTP the data modeling is different. In warehouse how the data is organized, organized and modeled is different. So at the time of loading into target systems like warehouse, according to expectation of the warehouse modeling, they need to perform a lot of transformations. So finally they will be loading data into warehouse databases. That can be Hadoop or that can be non-Hadoop like RDBMS databases. But once this data is organized into warehouse systems, finally our end client needs the reports in visualized formats. After that some visualization team will come into the picture. So these visualization experts, what they will do is, they will be connecting with warehouse systems and they will be running different queries and finally they present the data in visualized formats. In this way here, the three types of people you can observe here. So first person is like ETL in the part of BI. The second person is like a warehouse uh, modeling, modeling expert and uh, management expert of the databases managing the data and third person is like visualization expert. So the integrated team of all these three people simply called as business intelligence team. Of course you cannot say which role is great, which role is weak like this. Every role is important in the BA. But still the data science is not a replacement to the BA, this BA. Still BI, business intelligence team has to be existed into the industry they cannot do something, whatever they cannot do, such kind of things, the data scientist is going to provide the solution here. And here, what is the limitation of this BI team? So that point we are trying to understand here. Observe this. I am generating some bar chart. 
okay here in notepad vertically vertical bar i cannot type it some horizontal bar i will be trying uh, i'm trying to type suppose i have sales data my task is like like this generating three years sales report in visualized way suppose my report just uh, i'm writing horizontally you just imagine this graph in a vertical shape see the first graph is like this this is the first bar think that this is the bar this bar is the sales volume which happened in 2015 okay this is the sales volume happened in 2015 and next for the next year the sale report is like this in 2016 the sale graph is like this and come to the next one in 2017 the sale graph is like this of course the thing that the running year is 2018 sale report is not yet generated now i have like a path for the past three years we have the sales volumes these sales volumes are represented in a bar chart format see if you see this graph even a kid can understand so what happened here if this uh, if this bar is about a sales volume even we can easily understand that in 2015 there was some volume when time comes to 2016 suddenly what happened more than 100 percent the sales volume is increased but at the same time when time reaches to 2017 more than 70 percent of business got decreased this kind of basic understanding we can get by seeing this report so this is the work done by the bi people the visualization expert people but here etl people will be involving because the original sales transactions will be happening at oltp systems etl people are extracting the data and finally dumping into warehouse systems later visualization team extracted data from the warehouse and then they provided the visualized reports they published the visualized reports so this is what end-to-end -end work of the BI team. Suppose you are a client for my business. Now you are asking me some question. So the question is like this. Why sales got down? Suddenly in 2017. This is the question. To answer this question, these visualizations will not help you. That to do the in-depth question is like this. The typical question is like this. What are all top 10 parameters which causes loss? Loss or business fall down. Of course, there can be 100 suspected parameters. Among these 100 suspected parameters, what are the top 10 parameters the client needs? To answer such kind of question, so visualizations may not help us here. So we need to apply some statistical and mathematical modeling. And then finally, we need to analyze the data in a descriptive model. So at the time, not the business intelligence team, data analyst team will come into the picture. Okay. So this is what simply the limitations. The BI team can represent the data in different, different two-dimensional or three-dimensional or more than three-dimensional visual formats. But when time comes for such kind of questions, intelligence team cannot help us. At the time, data analyst team will be involving by applying some statistical or mathematical techniques or models. They will be chasing out such kind of answers. Okay.